everybody, welcome back. Yes, it is Cheapo time again, and look, we have something really fugly. Well, you know, it ain't that bad looking, I guess. It kind of grows on you after a while. But, uh, you know, well, well, maybe only a mother can love, but what can I say? The KTI 7030 is in the house. Yeah, this is a cheapo par extraordinaire because not only is it an analog, it's also a digital multimeter. It's two for the price of one. And speaking of price, this is cheap, cheap, cheap. We're talking 20 bucks Canadian. Well, 17, 18 US dollars. Wow, pretty cheap. But is it any good? Let's find out. So in the proverbial box, we don't get a whole heck of a lot. Funny enough, it shipped in like wax paper. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, um, we get our instruction. And once again, these are all in Chinese. Come on. Why are they doing this lately? All Chinese, no English to be seen. Uh, anyway, uh, we also get a date of manufacture. Here we see this was done in August 26, 2019. As far as multimeters go, that is um, not that bad, really. So uh, it's been on the shelves for a while, but... Uh, and here we go. Finally, last but not least, the test leads. Now I've got to say, these are kind of crappy leads. Um, they don't have a great feel to them. Cat 2, 600 volts, but oh my god. No, Cat 3, 600 volts, rather. Um, not very sharp, and honestly, they just, 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 they don't feel very good. They feel really cheesy. So, eh, well, hey. Okay, enough about the test leads. What really matters is this guy right here. Um, the KT7030, KTI7030, rather. There are a couple of variants on this. There's a new and an old version, and I believe I got the new version. Uh, it says that they will send you uh, at random one or the other, so what's that supposed to mean? I don't know, but yeah. Now, the meter itself, I gotta say, first impressions are, wow. You know, I was not expecting to get quite this hefty little meter. Um, it's heavy. It is a heavy meter. And not only that, the display, at first glance, seems to be very, very nice. So, first impressions, which are often lasting impressions, are quite good. I was not expecting anywhere near um, the pleasant meter to be so high up on uh, first impression, so I like, I like. So one thing that is severely missing on this multimeter is the fact that there is no tilt stand. No stand! <laughs> why? Oh why? Now I know a lot of multimeter purists out there, and believe you me, they have let me know that when you're looking at a multimeter, an analog multimeter, yes, you want to make sure you're looking at it flat. Honest. Not the easiest thing in the world to do sometimes when you're making a, a video on one, but irregardless, no tilt stand. Now, one thing I do like is that when you take it out of the boot, oh, you look at that. We have a built-in recessed rubberized grip. So even without that holster, um, you actually have a, a really nice tactile feel to it. So yeah, look at that. Definitely not your average looking meter, but um, you know what? Not so bad. Now, once again, too bad they didn't decide to put a tilt stand physically on the meter instead of the holster itself. But uh, well, yeah. Let's take a look at the rotary selector switch, shall we? Starting off at the midnight or off position. Low current, up to 200 milliamps. High current, up to 10 amps. Continuity and diode. Resistance, up to 20 mega ohm. Dual battery tester, 9 volt and 1.5. Three separate inputs on the bottom. High current, ACDC on the far left, up to 10 amps. In the middle, we have our common or ground. And on the right, we have our voltage, milliamp, resistance, diode, and continuity. Not much else going on on the body itself. We do have that one yellow uh, push button switch, and that is strictly for uh, switching between volts AC or DC. That's it, that's all. Already time is a waste, and let's turn on the meter. And there we go, there is our verbose display. Now you can see by default it is in AC volts. Really doesn't matter, it's how you have that yellow switch pressed or depressed. That's what you're gonna be in either AC or DC. So I just pressed it, now we are in DC volts. And you know what, hey, I gotta say, not too shabby. No, it's low resolution, obviously, but I mean, hey, you know what, it ain't bad. I like the fact that they have put it not right in the middle, but more on the side of the overall display as well. So uh, really easy on the eyes and doesn't get in the way of your other display, uh, the analog display on the top. So uh, I don't, I think they did a pretty good job overall with what we're looking at here. 
Okay, test leads are in now. Yeah, they fit good, but once again, this is definitely the weak link in the chain here. Um, I'd say replace these test leads, but anyway. So five volts is what we wanna see. Right now we are on the high part of the scale. Let's bring it down. And there we go, 4.99 volts. And you can tell the analog output is giving us almost the same. Let's just get in there a little quicker. Now, one nice thing about this meter as well, that it has a mirror in the background. That is for that parallaxis. Uh, when you're looking at the needle itself, you wanna get a true reading. So you look through, look at the mirror as opposed to the needle to show us where that is actually lying in a true state. And uh, yeah, nice to see that mirror on this cheapo. Giving you an idea of the size of the KTI 7030, you can see it's pretty, well, on the large side, it's not a small meter by any means. You're not gonna be able to stick this in your pocket. Um, out of these four, it is uh, right there at the top. Now, let's just put in the Havo test, uh, one that we all know and love. And really the Havo test is mm, perhaps a half inch taller, but uh, this thing is wide as well. So now it's a big, big hybrid multimeter. Gonna start things off with a quick voltage showdown. Um, now, if we look at that needle, we can see we are just a tad off. Um, it's gotta be right on that zero is where we want it. So what we're gonna do here is just take our little screwdriver and just adjust it. So, almost, almost. There we go. So we got that needle now right on the zero mark, which is where we wanna be. Okay, here we go. Starting off at 5.00 volts, 5.005 for the Fluke, 4.99 for the KTI 7030, and 5.00 for the UEI DM45. Awesome. Up, up, and away. Let's go up to 7.20 volts. No, let's make it 7.3. Why not? 7.31 for the Fluke, 7.28 for the KTI, and 7.30 for the UEI. Oh, yeah. Up to 21. 21.32 volts for the Fluke, and we are over limit on the 7030, so let's just bring it up, because yes, it is a non-auto raging multimeter. 21.3, look at that, awesome, awesome. And if we check out that analog needle, that is pretty close as well. And 21.31 for Mr. UEI. Okay, let's max it out all the way, 32 volts, even, Steven, 32.0, spot on for the 7030 and 31.97 for the fluke. It's still thinking about it, but uh, okay. So all in all, you know what? Hey, it's pretty darn accurate as a lot of these cheapos are in terms of accuracy. Um, not too many have failed in this respect. That is one of the bonuses of being in the cheapo realm. So good stuff. Already we're in high current mode right now, sitting around 4.9 amps and uh, yeah, no worries here. But... All right. Let's take it up a little bit more. Now we only have a 200 milliamp threshold here and we are over. Oh, wow, we were way over. Uh, let's try it again. 260 and we are over. This is once again, only a 200 milliamp threshold and back down to 120. So yeah, works good. Too bad it wasn't a little bit higher, but it works. And let's just bring it there. So that looks pretty well spot on right now. So yeah, not as handy dandy as having a nice ohms adjust uh, dial, but uh, anyway, it is what it is. Remember I paid 20 bucks for this. It is cheap like board. We have a 100K resistor right now and we're pretty darn close. 0 0.103 coming up, 103K. And here we go, final one. And we are over limit and I think this is a 460. Yeah, this is a 460K resistor and 460 coming up in the digital mode and for the analog not too shabby once again take a close look and you can see where we are 460 is what we want and yeah we're pretty close pretty close with that needle so all in all in terms of resistance i like it i like it a lot all right, next up is 9-volt battery test. I know some of you purists out there say, why do you do the 9-volt testing? It's absolutely useless. Those are for noobs, dang it. Well, you know what? There's a lot of new users to the world of multimeters. And I think, hey, why shut the door? You know, if a multimeter has the function, then let's try it out, okay? So deal with it. All right, here we go. Starting off with, now one of these, the Duracell is on the dead side. I know that for a fact, but we will see. Now, all that's gonna happen is this is gonna put a slight load on that battery. So if it is on its last legs, it will definitely let us know. Here we go. And 
coming up around 6 volts. And once again, if you take a look at the top of the meter housing on the dial, you've got that 9 volt and it says bad or good. This is on the bad side, so yeah, you know, it's bad. Next up is the other 9 volt just behind. Here we go. And coming up is 8.4 volts. So it is also getting down. But um, according to this, look at that, we're still in the good realm, barely, but we still got a little bit of life left in that Amazon 9 volt battery. So good stuff. I've got to say those Amazon batteries, I really like them. I think some pretty good bang for the buck. And this is not a sponsorship. I just think they're good batteries. All right, now it is diode time. Well, not diode, let's just call them LEDs, light emitting diodes. And let's start off with the green LED. And oh, it is lit. And if you saw that needle, uh, nothing coming up on the digital display, but for the analog, watch the needle. It's going to go to around 180. And that's exactly what it is. 1.8 volts is the forward voltage drop. So awesome. Over to the yellow should be about the same thing. 1.8. Yeah, 1.8 looks good. Over to the red, 1.8. Perfect. Now the blue should be about 2.5, 2.6 volts. And let's see here. And we're lit but we're not getting any voltage indicator on the blue. Okay, let's try the white. It's about the same. And yeah, the same. So we're getting that uh, output. Um, well, all five are being lit, but in terms of the uh, output of the forward voltage drop, it is showing up for three out of five with the analog display. Cool. Output voltage in diode mode is a balmy 3.1 volts. Excellent. Already Aphrodite, it is continuity time in the Cheapo Nation. Here we go, stock probes, three, two, one. Oh yeah, these leads are just shite. It is latched, but just really Pro crap. Masters. Oh, definitely, definitely better. Still not the loudest continuity in the world, but you can see it is latched and it is much, much quicker. Huge improvement over those crappy default test leads. Good stuff. Seventy-six point nine decibels maximum output volume in continuity. Well, I have to say so far, I've been really impressed. Was not expecting too much from this fugly looking meter, but the KTI 7030 has definitely uh, changed my mind. Yes, you can be interesting looking and still be really quite capable in terms of a multimeter. So, oh, good stuff. All right, let's take it apart and see what is on the inside. All right, inside. Teardown time. Here we go. Now we have one, two Phillips screws. That's it, that's all. And it just comes off like so. Oh, beautiful. Oh my God! It's got shielding! Holy moly! The cheapo is shielding! Oh, 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 the gods have listened! The gods have listened! Thank you so much! Okay, well, you know what that means? Yes, I will be cracking open the champagne before this video is done. Oh, yeah! Oh, diggity damn, I'm just so excited to find shielding on a cheapo. Oh, and look, you know, it just uh, wasn't much, was it? You know, but it's there. It's there nonetheless. Somebody's using their heads because why not put a little tiny Faraday cage in your multimeter? Okay, let's start things off. Wow, look at those, look at those Impa jacks. I'm telling you, I was expecting once again to see, you know, just your standard split variety here, but no, no, no. We have been impressed once again. They are screwed in really nice and tight with those uh, little standoffs. And uh, yeah, very, very nice little attention to detail. Wow, this is a $20 cheapo, let's not forget. And on the high current side, yeah, well, we don't have any big arse ceramics here, but we do have a couple of glass fuses. And I verified they are 5x20s, 10 amp, 250 volt on the high current and 250 milliamp, uh, 250 volt on the low current. Take a look at that current shunt as well. We got some little little grooves and edges in there. That's just to help that resistance up, whatever resistance threshold they were looking for. Uh, and once again, nice attention to detail. Uh, we have one PTC that is on the voltage side. Now you can also see we have a transistor here. I'm not 100% sure why they've got it right there. Here we're at the very top and on the far left, we have our piezo speaker. And in the middle, we have our meter housing. Okay, moving down the line, here we have our speaker piezo and over here's the grounding spring that's what interfaces with the back of the shielding on and finally to the right of that we have our nine volt battery housing it's actually well done it's got its own little separate holder here so it's not bouncing around what have you i've even put a little bit of foam in there and over here we have a dual op amp okay let's turn this puppy over see what's on the other side 
Here we are on the other side of the multimeter itself. And once again, look at those input jacks. Yeah, and wow, those uh, recessed uh, casements go right into the entire housing itself. So bravo, bravo, good job with those inputs. Okay, now the rotary pack tracks themselves, not too shabby, um, nice and clean. And uh, yeah, now there's no grease on here again, but yeah, lo and behold, you know what I'm gonna be doing? Yeah, I'll put a little bit of dielectric grease on there since it's out in the open. There's the main LCD itself. There is our track pads, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all toll. If you notice, there is one of the ball bearings on that rotary, in that rotary selector switch, rather. Um, yeah, just hiding, just giving us a little peek-a-boo. How do you do right there? And you know, it's kind of translucent. I don't see any other ball bearings here. So it might just be the one that is feeding that entire assembly really 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 nice mechanism once again it's it's really really well done the uh rotary selector switch on this meter okay well there you have it folks put it back together come back with my closing thoughts closing thoughts of the kti 7030 oh yes you know i like this one hey this is one of the more interesting cheapest i've seen in a while love that hybrid analog slash digital technology incorporated into one fugly looking meter it works for me it doesn't do capacitance it's not true or a mess and you know what at the end of the day it doesn't do it all but what it does it does it really well big bold display very easy on the eyes and i have to say it's a bit of a caveat but when you have this digital slash analog implementation all in one it seems to work don't even get me started on this amazing shielding oh yeah i promised you champagne and here we go Hey, here we are, my beautiful darling. And guess what? This is the first cheapo multimeter I've come across that actually has some shielding. Wow, Darren, congratulations. It actually does happen. It happens, you know, and I want to pinch me. Maybe I'm dreaming. Ouch, gosh. Okay, I'm not dreaming, I'm not dreaming. Here we go, I promised the viewers champagne. And guess what? Champagne. 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 Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, this is for shielding. Let's find, let's hope. Oh yeah, oh. booyah, ura! Okay, Alrighty. that's for our. That's for the viewers, guys. Viewers, yes. Enjoy the bubbly on the house. Plenty more where that came from, and do do our glasses here. Alrighty, this is gonna be great. We're gonna have wow. one. Wow, wow, it's actually happening, Darren. Can you believe this? I can't. Wow. I am in shock. Wow. I'd ask you to pinch me again, but that kind of hurt. Okay, here You're we go. Say Merry Christmas. No, no, that's no, not Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't Christmas, honey. Alrighty, here we go. Cheers to shielding, to cheap old multimeters in general, and let's hope they keep getting better. Cheers, everybody. And keep on testing. That too. Keep on <laughs> testing. The KTI 7030 gets an awesome four out of five stars. This is one old cheapo in cheapo land, and I advise you to get one while you still can. The price right now is super cheap. Will it always be that way? I don't know. Hey. Why take a chance? Get it, get it. Lots more groovy multimeter reviews and electronics news and so much more coming your way. Hey, thanks for watching. Till the next one, keep on testing. Oh, that's good champagne. It's actually good champagne. Not bad, not bad. Are we rolling? Oh, stop.